Today I'm bringing you a quick rules rundown of The Hunger from Renegade Game Studios and designed by Richard Garfield. For a full how to play video, check out the link in the description below. The Hunger is a deck building game for two to six players that'll have you playing the roles of vampires running around the board, hunting humans, and improving your deck. Your goal in The Hunger is to venture out from the castle to earn as many points as possible and make it back to the castle, or at the very least, the cemetery, before the sun comes up. Before we learn how to play, let's learn a little bit more about the cards we'll be playing with. Many of the cards in The Hunger share much of the same information, with a few exceptions. All the cards will have a speed value indicated here. Speed is used to move around the board and acquire cards from the hunt track. This icon here indicates the card's category, unless it's a starter card, in which case it indicates which player that card belongs to. A card's type is indicated here, and any victory points that card provides if any, will be listed here and here. A card's name is indicated here, and below that you'll find the card's effect, if any. If the effect appears on a light background, like this one, it takes place when the card is in your play area. If the effect appears on a dark background, the effect takes place the moment this card is hunted. For the first turn only, all players reveal their hand of three cards and calculate their speed point total. The player with the least amount of speed points will go first, followed by the player with the next lowest, and so on. Stack the player tokens so that the fastest player is on the bottom and the slowest player at the top. Every turn after the first, player order is determined by your vampire's place on the board, which region they're in. Vampires in the forest play first followed by Vampires in the Plains, which also includes this waterway here, then Players in the Mountain region take their turn, followed lastly by Players in the Cemetery. So it basically boils down to the player furthest from the castle goes first. If there are multiple Vampires in a single region, then the player order in that region is determined by the path they are on. Vampires on the road will play first, then Vampires on the railroad, and finally Vampires on the boat path. If there are multiple players in the same region and on the same path, then the player furthest from the castle goes first. If the vampires are stacked, then the vampire on top will be the first to go. Once you've taken your turn and done all you're going to do, flip your vampire token over to its inactive side to indicate your turn is done. Then play passes to the next player furthest from the castle. When your turn comes up, you must play all the cards from your hand and resolve each of them completely, one at a time, in whichever order you choose, with a few restrictions. The first thing you need to do before anything else is resolve all your discard and draw effects, which are indicated by these icons here. When selecting which card to discard, it has to be a card that you have not activated. When a card tells you to draw a card, take it from the top of your deck put it directly into your play area, and resolve it normally. There are a wide variety of card effects that I won't be covering in this video, but you can find a full list of card effects on the back of the rulebook. Okay, so once you've done all your drawing and discarding, calculate the total speed value of all the cards remaining in your play area, including any permanent cards you might have in play. Speed points are used to move and hunt, but you don't have to use all of them or any if you don't want to. If you're going to move on your turn, which you most likely will if you can, then it needs to be the first thing you do after calculating your speed points. Each speed point you spend will allow you to move one space along the path you're on. If you ever end your movement on a space with one or more other vampires, you have the option of pushing them to an adjacent space. If there's more than one vampire to push, start with the one on top and work your way down. When doing this, you don't have to push them into the same space. The only time you can't push a vampire is if they're in the cemetery or the castle. If you end your movement on a space with one of these board effects, you may trigger that effect. 
hunting is how players build up their deck and earn points by essentially purchasing cards from the hunt track. On your turn, you can only hunt once unless a special card effect tells you otherwise. To hunt, choose one card or pile of cards on a single space of the hunt track. The cost of taking the cards in that space is listed here. When you hunt, you must take all the cards in that space and add them to your discard pile. Cards with the ready keyword in bold are the exception. When you hunt one of these cards, you have the option of placing it on top of your deck rather than in your discard pile. You can hunt from pretty much any space on the board with the exception of the castle, cemetery, and these ship spaces. Players who have their vampires on this tavern space also have the option to hunt all the cards at that location for two speed points rather than hunting on the hunt track. Anyone who makes it all the way to the labyrinth can choose to take any one of the three eternal roses that grow there. But keep in mind that taking a rose counts as your hunt action for that turn. So you won't be able to hunt on the hunt track if you take a rose. While on a well space, you have the option of hunting twice, but your second hunt must be from the one cost column. The well at the castle is the exception to this rule because you can't hunt while your vampire is on the castle space. Each time you hunt a human, either by itself or as part of a pile of cards, you will instantly score the points listed here and possibly earn some bonus points depending on the region you hunted them in. Any human you hunt while in the plains region will earn you one additional bonus point, and humans hunted in the forest region will earn you two additional bonus points. Once you're done hunting, any speed points you have remaining are lost. They don't carry over to the next turn. Once your turn is over, flip your token to its inactive side. Then discard all the cards other than permanent cards that are in your play area. Lastly, draw three cards from your deck. If you ever need to draw a card and can't, shuffle your discard pile and place it face down, creating a new deck. Then finish drawing cards. After all players have had their turn, move the moon token over one space. Next, flip all vampire tokens over to their active side. Then move all remaining cards on the hunt track one space to the right. Any cards in the last space stay where they are, and any cards moving into that space will be included in that stack. Fill all empty spaces in the three column with a card from the top of the hunt deck. And lastly, if there are less than three cards on the tavern space and no vampires in that space, add one card from the hunt deck to the tavern. If the moon token is on the 15th space when it comes time to move it at the end of the turn, dawn has come and the game is over. Okay, first things first. Any vampires who have not made it into the cemetery or a castle are caught out in the sun and burnt to ash. So, no points for you. Vampires who make it into the cemetery manage to take cover in a vault to avoid the sun, but this narrow escape will lose you five points. And for those lucky few who make it back to the castle, not only do you get to keep all your points, but you get to take the top token of this stack and earn the points depicted. Okay, so for those of you who survived the coming of dawn, it's time to add up your points. First, calculate your card bonuses, which might look something like this Nemes card that awards you points for every religious human that you've hunted. Next, each player scores the points shown on the public missions if they have met the mission's requirements. Then, each player reveals their own mission and scores those. Once all the scoring is done, the vampire with the most points wins. If you're tied, then the player who makes it to the castle first wins. If no one makes it to the castle, then the vampire closest to the castle wins. And that's it. I hope this video helps, and I hope you enjoy playing The Hunger. See you next week. Thanks for joining us. If you like this video and you want to see more, subscribe to our channel. It's the best way to keep up to date with everything we do here at Board Game Coffee. But if you want to see more right now, we got plenty of videos to choose from. And if that's not enough, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Mark Maya, and this is Board Game Coffee. And remember, have fun, keep gaming, be social. See you next week.